right as darkness started setting in, the wolves started howling on the hill behind the house, so we, uh, we knew we were about to have problems. I can't imagine anyone seeing one without feeling some kind of a, a sense of thrill. I have no use for the critter at all. Zero. Get it out of here. What a phenomenal animal, you know, just a killing machine. In 1995, the U.S. government released gray wolves from Canada into remote parts of Idaho and Yellowstone National Park. Today, across parts of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana, some 1,500 wolves now share territory with humans. Humans who have complicated and passionate feelings about what it's like to live with wolves. In July 2008, a federal judge inflamed those feelings by placing the wolf back on the endangered species list after environmentalists sued. The relisting strained a fragile truce that had developed among Westerners affected by the wolves' expanding presence. So I feel like we've been lied to. One minute it's 10 packs, now it's 15 packs, yada, yada, yada. And too often, natural resource-based decisions are, are made by judges who don't know sick them about the issues. In Sublet County, Wyoming, more than 100 miles south of Yellowstone, third generation rancher Albert Summers has seen his calf losses more than triple since the wolves were brought back. A range rider that I just passed earlier in the day had just found a wolf killed calf. I thought maybe it was a coyote at first possibly um, and I watched a little longer I could tell it was quite a bit bigger. I could see that he was attacking this Hereford calf here. He's been grabbed by the hind leg here. Okay. This is very inconsistent with the bear attack. The difference between grizzly bears and wolves is that, is that bears sleep six months out of the year and, and a wolf doesn't. Freddie Botour runs the Cottonwood Ranch in the foothills of the Wyoming range. He had a 950 pound steer killed by wolves less than a mile from his house. When that steer was taken down, the economic impact of my operation wasn't that I just lost one 950 pound steer, and that's all I got compensated for. But the problem comes with the thousand other steers that were in with that steer when they were being harassed and predated upon by a pack of wolves. Typically a steer will gain 2.1 pounds a day in the time of the season that they were at. When they got stressed out like that, they probably didn't gain anything. So I lost two pounds a day for probably, we'll say two and a half days on a thousand steers. I didn't lose one steer. I lost a hell of a lot of more money than that. But you know, I think if you raise livestock in a country where there's fierce predators as there are here, then, then in a way you, you make a pact with that possibility of those deaths. Outfitters and hunters also worry that wolves are making their lives harder by decimating moose and elk populations. But as with many wolf issues, truth is in the eye of the beholder. I fed the feed ground just north of Pinedale here, and uh, everybody says that a wolf will just come kill the sick and the weak, and that's totally off the wall. I watched them come in there. They killed like 30 calf elk that winter that I fed, and none of them were sick. The Game and Fish knows that these calf numbers are plummeting. They know it. One lone wolf showed up about four years ago, a big black male. Very interesting, he killed essentially every crippled elk on the feed ground. Um, many of the hunters think that the wolves have killed all the elk. What we're seeing is that the elk have been moved in from small groups into larger groups, and then the larger groups of elk have been redistributed. But as far as, as our numbers in this region, our elk numbers haven't decreased because of wolves. In the Yellowstone area, the wolves' return brought an undisputed economic benefit. You know, there's not too many places in the world, period, where you can see wolves or where you can see wolves and bears at the same time. So there's just a uniqueness and people want to see those wild animals, those larger predators, and they really do attract a lot of folks to this area. And for us financially, it's a, it's a huge portion of what we do. It's probably a third of what our budget is. From a scientific standpoint, the return of this top predator produced benefits across the ecosystem. The wolf has forced changes in everything from how elk behave to how willows grow. 
It has what we call this cascading effect. We take this one large animal, one significant predator in the ecosystem, put it back, and all of a sudden things trickle down. Consequently, I think we've seen uh, good evidence that other species have responded to that, including willow, and then the birds that use that willow. We have more bird species and more densities in some of those places. And consequently, I think the moose population is also responding, even though they're being taken by wolves at times. At the southern edge of the wolves' expanding range, several packs have settled into the Wind River Indian Reservation, which is about the size of Yellowstone National Park. There, the Shoshone and Arapaho tribes have welcomed the wolves' return. I admire the wolf uh, for a number of reasons. The primary reason is because uh, wolves take care of their own, and I think the tribes learn from that. If, if wolves should be endangered or disappear from other parts of the country, they will always be here. They're going to be protected by the Shoshone and Arapaho tribes because they're part of the culture. They're part of the system. They're, the Creator put them here for a reason. Wolves have always been political animals in the West. From its eradication to its resurgence, the wolves' impacts on the Western psyche are bigger than the impacts on the region's economy or even its biology. One thing is clear. For humans who live in wolf country, the sound of a howling wolf will continue to provoke anger and inspire wonder. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of nerve-wracking to live with wolves. I certainly don't want wolves on our ranch here, and wolves are absolutely not welcome on our, on our ranch. As it stands now, I don't know what the future holds for these wolves. They're going to be here, apparently. As long as they're in the park, they're going to be dispersing out into these outlying areas. And I hope, again, on both sides, that we can look past the one issue that we don't agree on stand shoulder to shoulder on the ones that we do and make those happen. I do recognize that he's here now, so I recognize that things do change and that you have to go on forward.